Hi, it's Mike Chen. They say that in order to win a war, you must be willing to do whatever it takes. The use of threatening words and brute force are all necessary in winning battles, but you're going to need to take the extra mile if you want an ensured victory. And if you take a good look at our history of modern warfare, you'll see just how much science has had a hand in the victory of one military force and the defeat of another. From coming up with the most effective means for gathering intelligence in times of conflict and fragile peace, to developing weapons of mass destruction that put an end to a devastating global war and thwarted a powerful and influential empire. It cannot be denied just how much military groups have benefited from the bright minds of scientific experts. But even in our supposedly technologically advanced and scientifically enlightened world, you might be surprised to know just how far our modern armies have gone all in the name of victory. Some have even approached magicians and illusionists for tips and tricks in the art of deception while others have attempted to expand the abilities of the human mind beyond the boundaries of conventional science. Others have even sought out the rumored ancient items mentioned in myths and legends that promised unlimited powers to those who managed to find and possess them. And so in today's video, we're going to talk about five cases when modern armies and governments have tried to resort to magic or the supernatural in order to win real wars and achieve supremacy over their enemies. Number one, the United States government and the CIA a manual of trickery and deception. You've watched the movies and TV shows from the Bourne films to 24 to Alias and more, and you've probably wondered if any of what they have shown in these entertainment pieces are anything like how actual spies and CIA field agents operate in the real world. As it turns out, some of what many actors have done in these spy films are not so far from what real intelligence agents have done in reality. In fact, there's even an official manual for it. Back in 2010, the official CIA manual of trickery and deception was declassified and released for the general public. The manual was written during the Cold War by an American magician named John Mulholland. The book was essentially used in training intelligence agents of the CIA on how to use misdirection and deception in completing their assigned missions. The manual also teaches DCIA operatives on the best ways to conceal weapons, how to use sleight of hand to discreetly pass information, take items or put drugs in people's drinks, and how to assassinate their targets using only a poisoned pen. Number two, the Allied forces and the disappearance of the Suez Canal. Perhaps the most popular real case of an army using a magician to win a war is that of British stage magician Jasper Maskelini and his alleged large-scale concealment of the Suez Canal during the Second World War. In 1949, Maskelini published a ghost-written memoir titled Magic Top Secret, in which he detailed his exploits in aiding the Allies during World War II. The British magician was allegedly part of a special unit focused on the war efforts along the Suez Canal. Using his extensive experience and knowledge in the art of illusion, he devised a large-scale illusion system to conceal the entire canal and to misdirect the flying German bombers in the sky. To do so, he built an equipment referred to as dazzle lights, which was made of a revolving cone of mirrors. It produced a spinning light that was around 9 miles wide and it dazzled and disoriented German pilots, which consequently made them drop their bombs off target. It. Number three, the British government and the use of astrology. World War II was not an easy time from either side of the war efforts, and every military strategy was explored, even the most absurd ones. It would have been easy for the British government to defeat the Nazis had they known everything that was running in Hitler's unpredictable mind, and so they actually tried to do so by hiring an astrologer to write horoscopes for Hitler and several other Nazi leaders. In 2008, declassified documents released to British National Army archives catalogs revealed that the British forces assigned an astrologer named Louise de Wool to create fake astrological reports about the Nazi leaders and distribute them throughout Nazi Germany in order to demoralize the public. However, Wool took a step further by offering his services to actually divine what Hitler's advisors will tell him before they were acted upon. And so Wool typed out a report titled A Survey of 1943, which was a seven-page guesswork of when Hitler's major attacks will take place and the possible fortunes of important figures from both sides of the war. Wool was also sent off by Winston Churchill to convince the U.S. to join the war. But following the events of Pearl Harbor, his convincing powers and astrological abilities were of course no longer required. And as disclosed in the declassified documents of the MI5, the British government came to regret their decision to involve Wool in their military efforts, as many of them eventually led to the conclusion that he was nothing more than a charlatan and liked to boast about his secret role in the war. Number 
Number four, the Soviets and their extensive study on psychokinesis. During the war, the Americans and the Soviets tried to outdo one another in many things, the most popular of which is probably the space race that resulted in the first of many successful missions that landed mankind on the moon. Well, at least to some people, some still think it's fake. For both sides, it became necessary to explore every avenue to win the Cold War, including the paranormal. And so, both the Americans and the Russians raced against each other to be the first one to figure out how to harness the unknown by expanding the human mind, exploring people's potential abilities in telepathy and psychokinesis. So during the Cold War, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA, wanted to evaluate and compare the milestones achieved by the US and the Soviets in the research about the paranormal. So they granted Rand Corporation the authority to conduct a study about it, the results of which was published in the early 1970s. The organization reached the conclusion that the Soviets' research on the supernatural was more specifically geared towards by biology and physics in comparison to what the US states came up with, which was largely based on psychological theories. The Soviets did not only consider using telepathy as a means of communicating with submarines without the aid of electronic equipment, they also explored the possibility of training their cosmonauts to tap into their precognitive powers in order to foresee potential accidents in space. They were also interested in using mental imagery or psychokinesis to move objects which would be helpful in disrupting the guiding system of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Finally, number five, the Nazis and the search for the Holy Grail and the Spear of Destiny. We've all seen Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in which the Nazis were on the hunt for the mythical and the magical Holy Grail. And while we can't say for certain if they did encounter an immortal knight or solicited the expertise of an archaeologist with a dashing appearance equal to that of Harrison Ford, the Nazis did look for the Holy Grail in real life along with other religious ancient artifacts like the Spear of Destiny. According to the book, the desecrated Abbey. Written by Montessora Rico Gangura, Henrik Himmler, the head of the Nazi SS, embarked on a top secret mission during the Second World War to acquire the Holy Grail at an abbey in Spain. The book claims that the SS believed that Jesus Christ was not the king of the Jews and was in fact of Aryan blood. And so Himmler allegedly thought that if the Nazis gained possession of the Aryan Holy Grail, the ancient artifact would grant him supernatural powers and help the Germans win the global war. Unfortunately for the Nazi leader, no such magical cup was found, and if he did find one, it was never disclosed to the public. There are also stories and historical records claiming that Hitler himself acquired the Spear of Destiny, you know, the lance that pierced the body of Jesus, and he found the artifact in 1938. Of course, according to legend, whoever gains possession of the spear also gains the power to decide the fate of the world. However, once he sees to be its owner, he meets his death and is refused entry to the gates of heaven. And we all know that the world is, of course, not ruled by Hitler, so what he found may have been a very expensive knockoff of the Holy Lands, I don't know, maybe it was made in China, but Hitler did bring the spear to Nuremberg for safekeeping. In 1945, US soldiers under the leadership of General Patton got a hold of the spear Hitler thought was the real spear of destiny, and then soon after losing ownership of the lands, Hitler died having committed suicide in his bunker. So maybe it is true that losing the possession of the spear results in the owner's death, but we won't be able to test this theory again unless we're hoping to encounter another global tyrannical leader. So perhaps it is better that the spear Hitler does discovered is being kept safe inside the Wurzlich Schatz Karma Museum in Vienna instead. And they really need to watch out for this guy just in case because he's a little unstable. So in conclusion, people at war live in violent and uncertain times, which is why it is not that surprising that even in the modern world, opposing sides of a conflict are desperate to find ways to turn the tides of these bloody battles in their favor. To some of us, the idea of using magic, exploring psychic defense, or searching for lost ancient artifacts all for the sake of winning a war seems an absurd waste of time. However, However, to the leaders of these modern armies, it is a factor that they could not discount so easily. After all, they could not risk not giving magic and the supernatural the time of day when their enemies were spending resources to possibly utilize them as weapons. I mean, what if their enemy succeeded? How could they outsmart an enemy that has mastered the art of deception and misdirection? How could they fight against thousands of troops that can easily kill their opponents and predict the future using only their minds? How could they win against a colossal army in possession of a powerful ancient artifact that pretty much made them invincible? As commanders that lead thousands if not millions of soldiers, they chose to exhaust all possibilities to end the conflict in their favor, even if it meant resorting to magic or the supernatural. Perhaps from their perspective, they would rather have their pursuit for such things end up as fruitless endeavors rather than neglect that option and allow their enemies to use it against them instead. All right guys, hopefully you found this video interesting and let me know in the comments below, do you believe that magic or the paranormal could change the tide of war? Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.